today we're gonna check out a laptop with dual screens. What's happening Panda Nation? Peter Ron Panda here. I just picked up this laptop. It's an Asus Zenbook Duo. Now it's the very lowest on the line of Zenbook Duos because they are pretty pricey and this one was like 1300 bucks, which is funny because that's the cheapest one they make. So then it goes like to 1500 bucks for the 500 gig hard drive and then they start going up into the Duo Pro and the Zephyrus Duo or something like that up to like five or six thousand bucks which is not gonna happen for me not without falling into a lot of money but I thought I would check this out and the reason that I got this was because I've been using my MacBook Air a lot lately and it's a good little laptop but one of the things that I realized is that I do a lot of work and it's not necessarily the heaviest work ever but there are a lot of times when I'm trying to reference a spreadsheet or another document and what ends up happening is that you do a lot of toggling back and forth and sometimes I don't need to really see detail. Sometimes I just need to follow along in a different place. There are other times when I'm actually working and I want to watch a movie or run a YouTube video and you can't really put those up into the corner. It takes up valuable space. And so I thought this little second screen that comes on the laptop might be really helpful for keeping me productive without tapping back forth and maybe keep me entertained, which might be even more important so that I don't get hangry for my YouTube. Now, this is the that it comes in it's pretty cool it's brand spanking new it's kind of this i don't know blue gray box it seems very premium you can feel the weight of this laptop i do not think this will be the lightest thing in the world but it certainly seems as nice as any of the apple boxes i've ever had and in fact opening this up you can feel the tight section of it kind of the lid lifts off pretty slowly there we go you got it dropped out and here is the laptop itself so we've got the laptop over here. It looks like this is maybe where we'll find the accessories. And one of the things that I want to tell you right off the bat um, that kind of disappointed me, and you know, it's one of the things where I saw this and I was like, it's a no-brainer, I'm gonna pick one up, but it's this power cable. So you get kind of a standard Asus power brick right there. You get this single prong plug that plugs in the side, and then the plug that'll plug into the wall, you know, a three-prong grounded outlet on this side. And it's this that I thought was the biggest swing and a miss because what you'll see is that there's actually a USB-C port on the side of the Zenbook and I was like oh that's great because it must be Thunderbolt I can use it to power the laptop and as far as I can tell everything that I read and I certainly will test it myself it does not allow power to go into the laptop which is really disappointing so you always need a, this power cable and in fact I might want to buy a second one of these because I certainly like having it in my travel backpack so that I can just grab the laptop and roll without having to think about it but the nice thing about that MacBook was that I could power it off of any USB-C you know power block and cable and you know anything that had 60 watts or more did a decent job you could actually trickle charge it with like a 30 watt power charger when the computer was off if you really needed to in a pinch but that was a really nice feature so you've got to take this monstrosity with you and that was a that was a decent knock on this laptop now i will say as far as i know the zephyrus duo has that but again that's like a three four five thousand dollar laptop so i feel like they should have put that in there. I'm not sure why they didn't. I just don't know. There must have been a reason. But here's the laptop all wrapped in plastic. And they call it like Celestial Blue. And it's kind of hard to tell from the pictures. But it does have a, a blue tinge to it. And Asus has made really good looking laptops for a long time. I remember the original Zen books that were very MacBook-ish and very flat. They kind of had this, you know, radiating, iridescent look to the lids. That is pretty nice. We have a little card. That is, ooh, it's like foil um, attached actually to the lid. It's kind of like stickied on there. So what does it say? It's got oh, a little description of what we got here. Screen Pad Plus. The color accuracy is supposed to be awesome. So if you're a gamer, that can be something that you like. It's stylus ready, Wi-Fi. I don't actually know if this one comes with the stylus, but I'm going to just peel this off here. And that comes off pretty decently. Now, this laptop is the 14.1 inch model. So it's also the smallest and that's going to have some big impacts on the trackpad. That is kind of a notorious feature on this and a lot of people have complained about it. And I'm gonna show that to you and I am going to use this thing and to give you my thoughts on it. Now, on the top, it's very flat and it looks great, but the rest of it is where we need to see what this thing looks like. So even though this kind of tapers here, it kind of looks like it comes to a point, you can see it's actually pretty flat. The back and the front are about the same size. It's just kind of like this, this uh, angled edge right up here. It's kind of stealth bomberish looking. 
So pretty cool looking. And here is where you can see some of these ports. So this is a TF card slot and a looks like maybe a microphone headphone jack and then a USB-A port right there. If I flip it over to the other side and you can see a little bit of a pointed edge on the front here, you know, and a rubber pad that travels the length of the front and the back. Looks like grill right there, probably for venting some heat. I'm assuming that those grills on the side are venting heat too, but maybe they're speaker grills. And then on this side, again, here's the power port, HDMI, USB-A, and then that USB-C, but not Thunderbolt, not Thunderbolt. So it is nice that it has that capability and compatibility, but I really wish that would allow power transfer as well. And you can see how it kind of kicks up here. Now, what's interesting is that this hinge, actually, this is the part that will rest on your lap or a table in a lot of cases. I almost wish they had like some rubber on there because I don't think that this rubber is going to be used except for kind of sitting it, sitting it down on the table. But otherwise, it looks really nice. It's pretty premium. And, you know, you can see a little Torx head screws on there. So I'm not sure, you know, how this comes apart or if it's expandable in any way. But it's kind of nice. I mean, pretty beautiful. All right. So that is pretty awesome. Now, before I open it up, in the box here, we also have a little undercarriage treatment here. And it looks like this is just paperwork and guides and stuff like that. They should do like an Apple thing and include some Asus stickers. I don't know that anyone would use them, but. And I guess uh, stylus, even though it's compatible, does not come in, does not come with this. I don't see anything like that in the box itself. All right, so let's get to the business and I'm just gonna open this up here. Now I'm kind of curious if it's weighted. Yep, it seems weighted enough that when you pull open the hinge, the laptop stays in place. That's kind of a very MacBook-ish thing because there's a lot of laptops that have so much tension on the, or resistance on the hinge that when you lift it up, it's gonna lift the whole laptop with it. But it's kind of nice that you can just lift up the lid. And here's where you can see that this edge articulates down. So it raises this off the bottom. So that's why I think that this might be a heat vent underneath because now you get some pretty good airflow under there. But you can see here, this is my issue. Um, you'd have this little flat edge, which is actually going to sit on the table. And there are a couple of little nibs that are going to keep the broader edge of the, the lid off of the table. But you have these little tiny nibs, which are going to sit down. But they actually might kind of work like feet and put little imprints on like a tablecloth, or especially if you're working at a wood table or something like that. But I guess it's going to keep that edge from being, you know, nicked up and scratched up. Now, we do have a little felt in there that I'm going to get rid of. And we have this beautiful kind of matte finish screen up at the top. Again, 14.1 inches. The other thing I want to show you here is that this one does have a webcam. Not all of the duos have webcams. I was actually really surprised about that. And I think maybe the Duo Pro did not. And I was thinking in a day and age where we're doing a lot of video conferencing, or if you want to do some live streaming, those types of things, hey, what are you going to do without a webcam? So that was kind of a little bit funny to me. Now here is the money piece. This screen down here is kind of a half a screen. And what I love is that it basically goes the full width. So you can use this, especially since this is Windows based as a second screen, drag your applications down here. It also has a little bit of a slide out where you can have some shortcuts to your typical controls. But what I really love about this is that when you have a two screen setup, you can actually have things snap a little easier. Even if I have one big screen and on my desktop, I have a big, you know, widescreen curved monitor. I really like it, but you can't really snap things to it. It's actually easier sometimes when you have distinct different screens and things will just fill it out. Now, it doesn't mean I can't have things side by side, but obviously if I put a spreadsheet and a document side by side, I don't have a lot of real estate. So I do like the over under here. Now on the Zephyrus Duo, this screen will actually raise up a little bit when you open it, which I think is brilliant too, because I'm actually kind of curious that this is gonna be basically flat parallel to the keyboard and what i've heard is that when you're looking down on it it's not really a very good angle so i'm definitely going to experiment with that but the reflection is pretty good and again it kind of looks like it has a little bit of a matte finish but it's it's fairly shiny it's kind of semi-gloss to be really honest now the keyboard here island style keys and they are also in that kind of blue it looks pretty nice they at first glance seem very nice they're very quiet, which is great. I don't like a lot of clackety clack. They have a ton of travel. You know, I would say two plus millimeters of travel. So they feel really good. Just got a nice good feel, kind of a traditional style keyboard feel. Now here is the trackpad. And what you probably can't tell about this is that as far as I can tell on the dimensions, this is about 
the size of a business card with one of the ends chopped off. So if I hold it like this, and you can imagine a business card covering everything here, all the way but the trackpad obviously is not that big so you know if you think about these buttons missing this is about two inches up and down and i think this is only about like 2.6 inches up and down so ironically because it's vertical i think a lot of us traveling a widescreen laptop would prefer more width to it I will say that I've heard complaints and reviewers talking about how this is small, it's almost unusable. I will tell you that I don't like using trackpads, even with laptops, I kind of use them in a pinch. I do like carrying a, a mouse with me. I like the fact that it has USB-A, so I can just plug in any mouse, and I like having that capability. Uh, trackpads are nice because, like I said, if I don't have the capability to do that, I'm working on an airplane, I'm working on my lap or something like that, then I can still stay productive. So I'm hoping the trackpad is decent, but I probably would not be using this as my primary directing device for the cursor, if that makes sense. And we have a couple buttons down here. If you go up to the Duo Pro, I think there is a backlit number pad as well. And this is not gonna have it. This is why it falls in a cheaper price point. But I do think that's actually pretty clever for some of us who do a lot of number input. Having at least a virtual number pad here can be kind of useful. Now, I am going to go ahead and get this thing powered on. We have a power key right here. And I'm going to get this thing connected to my Wi-Fi, set up, and use it, and then give you my thoughts. All right, guys. So I've been using this Asus for a little while here, and I overall really like it. It definitely has some drawbacks. Now, one of the drawbacks that you could see here is that it wasn't connected to the internet. And so I've noticed that sometimes it loses Wi-Fi connection and then we'll find it again. So I'm not sure exactly why that is, but I'm glad I caught it on camera because I wanted to show that to you. And basically what I love about this and let's just start with the first thing and the obvious thing is the second screen. So it's right down here and I have the laptop set up to where I'd use it and I've got my camera set up right at about my eye level and you can see here that we actually have a pretty decent uh, screen down here and a decent angle on it. I won't call it great. Now I wanna show you, it works just like any Extendo monitor. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this tab here and I'm gonna slide it down here and you can see, just like any extended monitor, it's pretty clever. Now, if I back up here, this is works all right. I can actually watch a video, you know, in one of those things where if you're just trying to stay entertained, you can throw on Netflix, you know, whatever you want. And I can even show you here, as I roll it up and go to kind of the full screen, it will take that up. Now, again, it's angled pretty far away from me but it's not bad and it's totally usable. And if you're just trying to work, and for me, I like having the TV on, maybe you put a movie that I've seen before, so I'm not really focused on it. This kind of satisfies that need. So I actually really like it. And you can see there how wide that sucker is. Now, I will say the sheen on this is a little matter than it is up here. And one of the things that I was kind of not digging was that it didn't seem as bright, but I found that you can go to this pop-up here. You'll always have this little chevron ghosted on top and you go up here and you can change the brightness and so i kind of have it cranked up here and that's kind of what i like because actually when it kind of by default goes in the middle it just looks a little too dim especially compared to that main screen so i like cranking this up now that's going to have some drawbacks to the battery life and i'll talk a little bit about those but we also have some other options here it's kind of interesting I'm not actually sure what all these do, but this one here, this third one, will actually swap the screen. So if I hit that one, and you can see, throws it up there, which is kind of nice, especially if you're looking at something down here and you want to see the full view of it, you know, a spreadsheet, something like that, you can just go down here and quick swap them back and forth. It's kind of a nice feature. And this little pop out then will disappear as soon as you click away. But you do have some other options here. This will also lock the keyboard. I kind of think that's kind of interesting. And then you'll have to unlock it over here, but that'll allow you, I guess, if you are writing or drawing up here and your hand hits the keyboard, you don't have to worry about inputs there. So you can take that off. So it's pretty nice. The second screen right now is kind of blowing me away. Yes, it'd be nice if this were able to be angled up, but again, that's more hardware. It makes it more expensive. They have to do more durability testing on it, but just having that available is actually pretty clever. Uh, now, I do want to talk about uh, the brightness and the battery life here. 
because having two screens is obviously going to draw more power. And I would say that in my use here where I've got this screen brightness cranked pretty high, just because I like it bright and this one pretty high, in my experience here, not doing a ton of computing, but kind of your standard stuff, I would say, which is listening to some videos and having audio play, I'm getting four, five-ish hours. So is it all day computing? Well, I don't know that I would feel as comfortable with how far the battery seems to go down normal usage compared to my MacBook, which seemed to definitely be seven, eight, nine hours, and I never had any problems with it. But I would say you do have 50% more screen running pretty much all the time. So you got to keep that in mind because it's a big draw on the battery. So, okay, that's one thing. I will also say the back of the keyboard is really nice. You may see it flickering on my camera, but that's just the refresh rate. It's not flickering in real life at all. Okay, so the other thing that this screen is really awesome for is if you are trying to run two applications. So I have uh, text maker and plan maker here. And if I just drag this down here, down here to the screen, and what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go ahead and tap on this and see if I can get it to maximize. It's a little hard, it's a little small. And then I can go up here and tap. We do have touch screens, which is really nice because that augments this very little trackpad. I'll talk about that. But now, like I said, if I'm going down here and just looking at numbers and I don't want to tab back and forth, it's really, really nice. And I would think in the world of, say, video conferencing, you bring up someone on your team, you know, a video call up here, you can still have a document here, you can still have your resources up. It's actually a really good way to have a dual screen set up on a laptop without increasing the real estate. And I think it's a huge advantage for those of us that are really worried about, say, productivity. So that's pretty cool. Now, I will say, you know, if this is where you're looking at the laptop at, you know, it's probably not the easiest thing to see here. You probably want to zoom in a little bit. Sometimes you kind of find yourself kind of hunching over the keyboard to see the uh, lower screen a little bit, but I think it is quite usable. Um, obviously, if both of these were vertical, that'd be even better. Intel had like a demo laptop where it was actually hinged right along here. And so both of these screens would kind of uh, go vertical, which is kind of nice. It would actually put this, I think, a little more eye level and makes that one really readable. It was a great concept. I would love to see it in production, but I think, again, at the price point, I think this is pretty good. Now, um, I mentioned that this is touchscreen and I really, really like that because the trackpad here leaves a little bit to be desired. Now, it's an issue because of its size. Now, a couple things I did to really start to use this more productively is one, I found myself putting my hand here and moving the cursor with my thumb, okay? So I think that's actually a little bit more convenient sometimes than doing it with your fingers, which you would normally do. It does do gestures. So if I am on a browser like this and I use two fingers, I can definitely scroll up and down, which is cool and you'd expect. And one will click, two finger tap will right click, and that's all well and good. Now the problem with this is because it's so narrow is that sometimes I found myself putting my two fingers down to scroll like this, and one of them was on the edge, and it wasn't registering it as a two finger scroll. So it was only registering it with the cursor, and so I would put them both down, and the cursor was moving, and that's because I had my finger running on this edge instead of kind of more in the middle. Now, when the trackpad is much bigger, it's much easier to not necessarily be right on that edge. So that was something that I kind of noticed. The other thing that's kind of interesting about this is that laptops are usually bound by the screen edges. And one of the things is now that your cursor is not bound by the bottom, I can just drag it down here. Uh, you can't get lazy and just kind of throw the cursor down to the bottom because you know to come down to this taskbar, you actually have to be a little intentional with it because it's really easy to kind of go into this next screen and lose the cursor. And I'm like, where is it? Oh, it's down here. And you bring it back up. Not a huge deal. And it's just kind of the nature of having two screens side by side. If you use dual screens uh, on a desktop or something like that, you're going to be familiar with this effect. But it's one of those things where normally I don't have a screen above each other. And so sometimes it can be just a little tough to lose the cursor. Even there, I kind of lost it because you may have it down here on the lower screen and you don't even realize it. Okay, so I have a business card here. I wanted to show you this because I wanna compare the trackpad to how big this is and you can kind of grab a business card to give yourself a little bit of the trackpad experience at home. If I put it down here with these two buttons, you can see that overall it's still a little shorter than the business card and just about as wide. If I 
go above the two physical buttons, you can see that it seems to be, you know, a quarter shorter than the, the business card itself. So this is not a big trackpad. But I will say I haven't had that much problem with it. Now, again, because of the size, what I've actually done is I've gone to trackpad settings and I've increased the responsiveness or the speed as they call it. You can do it with a mouse too. Because what I was finding is that sometimes to traverse the entire screen, I was having to do multiple swipes. And I didn't really want to do that, especially your hand kind of gets tired of doing that. I will also say here that the disadvantage of having the trackpad over here is that the keyboard is pushed over, quite obviously. Now, on my list of nitpicks, the problem now is when you're normally sitting down at a laptop, you are kind of centering yourself right here. And so you've got half your hand here and half your hand here. So the problem is you're kind of sitting off center a little bit. It doesn't take that long to get adjusted to it, but there are times when I'm using a different laptop, a MacBook, my normal desktop computer, and I come back to this and I'm hitting wrong keys because I'm just not centered correctly, you know, because this feels a little over when I center myself to the keyboard, right? So now I'm looking at it and you just don't feel like the laptop is centered. Obviously it would be nice if this were centered and the trackpad were in the middle, but the real estate here just doesn't allow that. So that's kind of another thing if you're really OCD about kind of being centered, right? This is gonna be your center of vision over here. So it's just kind of how it is. I will also say that as you can tell, there is no wrist pad. Now I have this set up on a table here and what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna push the laptop away from you a little further. So that screen is gonna be a little further away because you're gonna use the table as your wrist pad here. And that works all right. It's actually not that tall. It probably would be a little bit better, a little more favorable if this would kind of hug the table a little bit more, maybe a little more dramatic, sharper point to the edge, but it's not bad and I've had no problems using it and I kind of forget about it. And one of the things I thought is, oh, maybe if they had a slide out or flip out wrist support there, that would be nice, but this isn't bad. It's it's actually of my foibles to call out. I would have thought this would have annoyed me like a six or seven out of 10, but it really annoys me actually like a one or two. It's actually not that bad. Now, the problem with pushing the screen further back or the keyboard forward is one, you need more real estate when you wanna use this conveniently. So the times where I think this is most important is not sitting at a table like this or your desk, but it's anytime you're working remotely, which especially if you're a road warrior and sitting in economy class, usually you have your laptop like this, you're using the uh, wrist pad on the computer and you're typing like this and you're all crunched up. But the problem is you need another six inches in this case to work, so if you are going to work on this on a tray table in economy, I think this is not the right laptop. You are gonna have to be in economy plus because you're gonna need all that real estate or in first class. The other thing that this does is just grab it like this and I bring it down to my lap and I get it balanced in my lap like this. One, it's not that comfortable because of that sharp edge on the screen here. It's not bad because it's not super heavy, but what you can see here is I have to really kind of like T-Rex my arms back into my body to type like this. And in fact, my belly is getting in the way of a comfortable hand position. So using this on your lap is uh, not really, really comfortable. So if you're doing a lot of road warrioring and sitting in an airport chair or in a car dealership and having to work on your lap, probably not the best laptop for you. I would say the Surface tablets are kind of the same way. They're just not set up for lap work, but that's also not a huge, huge problem. Again, I also want to confirm here, this USB-C is not Thunderbolt. And I did use a 63 watt power brick and I plugged in a USB-C cord in there and it didn't do anything to charge the battery. So I can confirm it's a big question that's on the internet. Can you in a pinch at all use a USB-C cord to charge this or throw power towards it? And I can say conclusively, it just never ever works. So you're gonna need your power cable when you roll out with this thing. I also wanna talk about heat because I actually thought that with this elevated, and the heat would be vented out of there, that'd be great because I expected this thing, it's a Core i7, to throw out a lot of heat. And at least the way I compute, I'm not apparently using the processor too much because it actually doesn't get that hot. Certainly no hotter than any of my other laptops. Now, if you're gaming, doing a heavy processor draw on it or load on it or something like that, maybe it's gonna get pretty hot. But again, I couldn't tell, actually, even after picking it up and running my hand on the bottom, that it was any hotter than my MacBook Air. So. That was pretty nice, and 
I don't hear any fans or anything going. So totally might get hot for you. And especially if you're doing a lot of graphical work or processing video or something like that, it might heat up at that point, but it didn't for me. Now, the other thing I wanna say is this laptop, kind of like the Surface Pros, will use the camera to do a facial recognition login. And I actually really like that. It's pretty clever. And I know it's not the most secure thing. I've seen people hack it with a picture of someone's face, but, I don't know who's going to go through that effort. And so it's kind of the nice thing because on Macs, you can log in with your Apple Watch. If you're wearing it, it'll automatically log you in. And so it's kind of nice because there isn't another biometric option here, no fingerprint reader or whatever. So it's kind of nice that that works in Windows and it does seem to work pretty well. That's pretty cool. Overall, I've been using this and I really like it. The keyboard feels good. I've kind of gotten used to the trackpad. I would prefer a mouse. I love the fact that it has physical buttons, even though it will take the um, single press or the double press and the sweeping of the fingers, those types of things. It's really nice to have the physical buttons, especially when you only have those virtual buttons. Sometimes you tap it and it kind of moves the cursor. You don't have that issue when you have these buttons there. So that's pretty nice. The other thing is from a productivity standpoint, if I pull up that little chevron here, we do have a number keypad here. So, you get this little virtual keypad that pops up and that's kind of nice because it uh, allows you to enter numbers a lot quicker. I would say that overall, I really like it. And the trackpad kind of annoys me. It's a five out of 10. The keyboard is great. That's a 10 out of 10. The second screen is really what makes this awesome. It's a 10 out of 10. Even though I don't like Windows as much as Mac, if I were to call Mac OS a 10 out of 10, I like Windows like a seven or eight out of 10. But the fact that you have a second screen here that no one else seems to be doing really makes this better suited for people like us that need to do productivity things or just be entertained. Um, I'm sure gamers have some sort of console that they can use with it. This is really, really awesome. And I would love to see, you know, a few enhancements to this computer, but at 1300 bucks, it's about the same price as a MacBook Air. And this screen is awesome. It's not perfect by any means, but it is awesome. And I can't imagine being on the road with a single screen. I just haven't liked it. You have seen probably my old videos where I will buy these LED panels to take with me. They plug in the USB-C port so that I can extend it because it is just really painful to work on a small small laptop screen and a 14 inch screen is not that big. It's no bigger than a lot of compact laptops. And this one is pretty compact and yet has the second screen. So that is totally awesome. Now I will say probably overall eight out of 10 for this laptop. I really, really dig it. I actually think the value is pretty good. You know, this is only the 256 gig model with eight gig of RAM and an i7 Core i7 processor. So it's pretty well kitted out. And I don't think it's overpriced, especially for what you get. And so great productivity machine. Now, here's where I'm a little torn. If you're thinking about getting this, I could see people saying, well, I'm just going to wait for the second generation, maybe a little bit better battery life. Maybe the USB-C becomes Thunderbolt, kind of releases me of the proprietary power cables, you know, just little upgrades to a lot of things that people were talking about here. Maybe they even do a little bit to, you know, kind of shrink the keyboard up a little bit so that it's not really noticeable, but maybe you can get another half an inch on the trackpad. I think some of those small changes would be really, really welcome and kind of take it to another level. But as a laptop right now that has cornered the market on a second display, I think it's really, really awesome. And what I love about it is that they are kind of pushing the envelope and innovating. And it's one of those things where I love the fit, finish, and kind of overall integration of the Apple products, but they haven't really been pushing the envelope here. You know, without Steve Jobs, I don't see them doing things like e-ink and a second screen and things like that that would seriously keep me in the Apple ecosystem. Right now, I think some of these competitor products, even though in some ways I think they're working with some inferior software, I'm willing to do that because of these other innovations that are really making it compelling for me. So, like I said, I think this is great. To me, if you are looking to spend 11, 12, 1300 bucks on a laptop, this is probably the one you should get. You know, I don't know that I would recommend any of them, even the Surface Pro tablet and all that. I mean, you get touch screen up here and you get kind of the best of everything and the trade-offs, which you have to make, you know, aren't that bad. I thought they'd be worse and that's why I probably didn't pick one up right away and kind of wanted to see what people were saying but so far i really like it hey if you want to pick up one of these asus zenbook duo laptops i'll put a link to them in the description below peter von panda
out.